Hello friends, welcome to Fears Cloud Learn to Lead. Good morning to all the students. Today we will discuss very important current affairs of 23rd of April 2022. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current affairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you have to download our application Careers Cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily, you will see three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Most important section is the monthly and we are providing four type of PDFs. One is detail, second is question and answer format, third is best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and fourth one is pocket PDF which means two liners and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs in quick format before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are providing 20 most important topic wise PDF. It means if you want to cover one particular topic, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you are a banking student, we are providing three things. One is detail, second is question and answer format and third is the quiz section. But all these three things are only related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz only on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. We are providing detailed budget and economic survey. Expected question and answer will be provided to you so that you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing you state current fair and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that, log in with the email ID, then click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But if you are a new student, you are just starting your preparation, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years. And we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ASH10. And if you have any query, you can email us or you can call us on this number or email ID. So let's start 23rd of April 2022 current fears. But first of all, we have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join a telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time. Here is the first question in the most important section. Who is awarded with the John F. Kennedy Profile in Courage Award 2022? So the keyword here is John F. Kennedy Profile in the Courage Award 2022 and this award first time ever awarded to the five individuals, but one of the individual is Vladimir Zelensky. So answer of this question is B and Vladimir Zelensky is currently the president of Ukraine. This is very amazing thing, but you have to remember president of Ukraine is awarded as John F. Kennedy Profile in Courage Award 2022. You can also see here the picture of Vladimir Zelensky who gets this award, but this award is presented to five persons. So remember, for the first time ever, this award is awarded to the five individuals. One is Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. Second is United States Congress Woman or Representative Liz Cheney. Next is Zosilin Benson. She is Michigan Secretary. And next is Russell Rusty Bowers. Remember, he is currently the Arizona Representative. And also, the last person is Vandria Shai Moss, Elections Department Employee in the Georgia. So all of them are awarded for their courage to protect and defend democracy in the United States and the abroad. So especially Volodymyr Zelensky is very important and Ukrainian president is named for his courage to protect Ukrainian people during the Russian-Ukraine conflict. But you have to remember this award, John F. Kennedy Profile in Courage Award. This award was created by the family of late president John F. Kennedy. And it is to honor public figures who risk their careers by embracing unpopular positions for the greater good and is named after Kennedy in 1957 Pulitzer Prize winning book Profiles in Courage. That's why it is known as Profile in Courage Award. So remember, this award goes to five person, but the most important person is Vladimir Zelensky, who is currently the president of Ukraine. But the other persons are very important like Carolina Beloska. Carolina Beloska recently won Miss World 2021. This is very, very important. Miss World 2021. Next is Francis Kerry. 
he recently became the first african to win the pritzker prize remember pritzker prize of 2022 dennis p sullivan he recently won able prize able prize for the year of 2022 and very famous american mathematician dennis p sullivan won the able prize for the year of 2022 so all the awards are very very important move into next question who is selected as the recipient of champions of the earth lifetime achievement award 2021 again very important award and the keyword here is earth lifetime achievement award of 2021 and united nations environment program because this award is presented by united nation environment program has named sir david attenborough so answer of this question is d very famous english natural history broadcaster and naturalist as the recipient of the champions of the earth award 2021 so you can also see here the picture of david attenborough received the earth lifetime achievement award and he selected under the lifetime achievement category because there are so many categories so one category is important this is lifetime achievement category and it is for his dedication to research documentation and advocacy for the protection of nature and its restoration and sir david attenborough is well known for his innovative education television program especially the nine part life series forming the life collection and his well known documentaries include the green planet the green planet a plastic ocean this is again very very important even his noted works include the life series like life on earth in 1979 the living planet in 1984 the trials of life in 1990 and others and he has won 3 emmy awards and the 8 british academy of the film and television arts award which is also known as bafta awards so this is very unique thing about david attenborough but you can also remember what is united nation environment program champions of earth award so this award honors individuals groups and organizations whose actions have a transformative impact on the environment so it is a united nation highest environment honor so that's why this award is most important and since its foundation in the year of 2005 the champions of the earth award was honored to 101 laureates including 25 world leaders 62 individuals and 14 organizations and there are so many categories like total five categories are there one is lifetime achievement category under which david attenborough was awarded but other four categories are like inspiration and action science and innovation entrepreneur vision policy leadership but you don't have to remember these because the most important personality is only david attenborough so moving to next question but you can also remember the other options here is albert borla albert borla who is currently the chairman and ceo of very important company p pfizer received the prestigious genesis prize of 2022 remember genesis prize for 2022 awarded to albert borla who is p pfizer chairman and ceo next is jishan a latif he was recently received ramnath goenka award ramnath goenka award and especially in the photojournalism category for his photo essay work next is wilfried brusset wilfried recently won the stockholm water prize 2022 water prize 2022 all the awards are most important move into next question next question is in the very important question section but first of all you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time here is the first question in the very important section beam upi became operational at neo pay terminal across which country so in simple word you can say that beam upi started in which country at neo pay platform and answer of this question is united arab emirates so answer of this question is b so recently npca international payment limited has announced that beam upi which is also known as bharat interface for money unified payment interface has gone operational at neo pay terminals across united arab emirates so you can also see here beam upi go live at neo pay terminal in the united arab emirates so the initiative will empower indian tourists to pay at neo pay terminal using beam upi which has become the preferred means of the payment for indian citizens even you can also remember that neo pay is the payment subsidiary of mashrak bank this is very important mashrak bank the us oldest bank and it is a leading financial institution in the middle east 
Even in 2021, this NPCA International Payment Limited and Neopay collaborated to build the acceptance infrastructure in the United Arab Emirates. And the introduction of Beam UPA in the United Arab Emirates will be significant step towards boosting digital payments in the country. Even Indian tourists can now make seamless payment using Beam UPA throughout the Neopay platform enabled shops and merchant outlets in the United Arab Emirates. So by using the Neopay terminals, Indian tourists can now pay using Beam UPI. So this is the unique thing about the international payment arm of the National Payment Corporation of India, which is known as NIPL or NPCI International Payment Limited. So remember about NIPL, NPCI's International Payment Limited is fully owned subsidiary of National Payment Corporation of India and it is focused on transforming payments across the globe with the use of technology and innovation. And who is the CEO of NIPL? CEO is Ritesh Shukla and it was started in the year of 2020 and its headquarters is in Mumbai. Moving to next question. Who signed a statement of intent with UNICEF India on sustainable development goal focusing on children? Very simple question. You can remember the question as same as in slide. Answer of this question is Niti Ayog. So C is the answer. So National Institution for Transforming India, leading policy think tank of India has signed a statement of intent on the sustainable development goals with an focus on children with the United Nations Children Fund India. And you can also remember this is Niti Ayog who signed an agreement with UNICEF India. So it focuses on multidimensional aspects of the child development such as health, education, nutrition, protection and the other relevant areas. This initiative will assist India in achieving its commitments under the 2030 agenda by offering a set of policy suggestions for concerned actions on the sustainable development goals in order to leave no children behind and achieve holistic development. And in order to achieve the sustainable development goals, child development priorities, UNICEF India and Niti Ayog are developing a comprehensive measure to understand the multidimensional attainment and deprivations among the children. So these are the things which you have to remember because Niti Ayog and UNICEF India signed a letter of intent or the statement of intent so that they can achieve sustainable development goals regarding children, health, regarding children nutrition and the other things which are related to children. So remember about Niti Ayog, Niti Ayog was established by the Union Cabinet Resolution with the purpose of providing directional as well as policy inputs to the government of India. And who is the CEO of Niti Ayog? And he is Amitabh Kant. And this organization was formed in the year of 2015. Moving to next question. What is the theme of Earth Day 2022? Most important day of the year, this is Earth Day 2022, which is also known as International Mother Earth Day. And it is annually observed across the globe on 22nd of April and it is to honor the earth and the concept of peace. And what is the theme of 2022? Theme is invest in our planet. So answer of this question is B. So you can see here this is International Mother Earth Day also known as International or the World Earth Day and it is observed on 22nd of April and the theme is invest in our planet. And remember, the day also reminds the need for a more sustainable economy that works for both people and the planet. And Earth Day 22nd of April marks the anniversary of the birth of modern environmental movement which was started in the year of 1970. And 22nd of April 2022 marks the observance of 52nd Earth Day. 52nd Earth Day and remember the theme is invest in our planet. Moving to next question. A book titled The Magic of Mangla Jodi, authored by whom? So recently, the Chief Minister of Odisha, Naveen Patnaik ji, released two books. And out of two books, one book is named as The Magic of Mangla Jodi. And this book is authored by Avinash Khemka. So answer of this question is D. So it is a coffee table book which is titled as The Magic of Mangla Jodi. And it is authored by Avinash Khemka. And name of the second book is Sikh History of Eastern India. And this book is authored by Abhinash Mohapatra. So answer of this question is B. So remember both the books, but first of all, we will talk about the magic of Mangla Jodi. So it is a coffee table book. The magic of Mangla Jodi provides a bird's view of the Mangla Jodi in Chilka Lake through various images and the descriptions. And the Mangla Jodi is well known for its story of successful nature conservation where the local community members have renounced their traditional bird hunting practices and pledged for the protection of the wildlife and habitat. But the author is again very famous, Avinash Khemka, very famous wildlife photographer as well as 
conservationist. But the other book is Sikh History of Eastern India. Again, this book is very important. This book is authored by Abhinash Mohapatra and the book is a result of the meticulous research work on the Sikh history and the philosophy by the Abhinash Mohapatra. And this is a compilation of eight books authored by the Abhinash Mohapatra, which include Sikh history of Bihar, Sikh history of Assam, Sikh history of Bangladesh, Sikh history of West Bengal, Sikh history of Odisha, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim and Andaman and Nicobar. So the preface of the book is written by Sardar Gurbak Singh, who is the junior vice president, junior vice president of Shromni Gurdwara Prabandha Committee or SGPC, which is situated in Shri Harimandir Sahib. And Abhinash Mohapatra is a scholar of the Sikh history based in Odisha and he has authored around 38 books on the Sikh history, theology and the principle. So both the books are very important. I am repeating again the magic of Mangla Jodi authored by Abhinash Khemka and the Sikh history of Eastern India authored by Abhinash Mohapatra. But both books are released by Chief Minister of Odisha, Naveen Patnaik ji. But other options are very, very important in both the questions like first option is Richa Mishra. Richa Mishra recently authored a book, Unfilled Barrels, Unfilled Barrels, India's Oil Story. Again, very important book. Next is Amitav Kumar. He recently wrote the blue book, the blue book and the caption is a writer's journal. Next is Vikas Kumar Jha. He recently authored the Queen of Indian Pop, the Queen of Indian Pop. And basically this book is authorized biography of Usha Uthap, Usha Uthap. Remember, all the books are very, very important. And in the second question, again, all the authors very important. Navdeep Singh Gill, he recently wrote Golden Boy and Golden Boy is Neeraj Chopra. Next is Rajiv Bhatia. He authored a book about India and Africa relations and name of the book is also India, Africa relations and the caption is Changing Horizon. Next is Samuel Moen. Samuel Moen wrote a book named as Humane, Humane. How the United States abandoned peace and reinvented war. So we discussed eight books in the two questions. So this is most important thing. Which company has partnered with Applied Environmental Research Foundation to protect mangrove ecosystem of which state? We are asking two things. One is the name of the company who signed an agreement with Applied Environmental Research Foundation to protect the mangrove of which state and the name of the company is Apple and the state is Maharashtra. So answer of this question is C. So Apple company has partnered with the Applied Environmental Research Foundation which is also known as AERF and the Conservation International to protect the crucial mangrove ecosystem and the livelihood that depend in the Raigad district. Remember Raigad district of the Maharashtra. So this is very very important. And this is a part of Apple's ongoing work to support communities most affected by the climate change. And the project is also a part of Apple's $200 million restore fund launched in the year of 2021 with Conservation International and the Goldman Sachs. And it is to help protect the mangrove ecosystem in India and the livelihoods that depend upon it. And it is also to help the transition of the local economy to one that relies on keeping mangroves intact and healthy. And this organization is again very important, Applied Environmental Research Foundation. It will enter into the conservation agreement with the local community or the members offering support in exchange for the conserving and protecting the mangroves on their land. And the conservation agreement will provide sustained support to the villagers in exchange for conserving the land. Now, why this Raigad district is important or mangroves in the Raigad district is very important. Because the mangroves protect the coastal community from climate impacts like the unpredictable monsoon and rising tides. So this is very important or this is very important function of the mangrove. And they also act as the carbon sinks. Carbon sinks that absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store into their soil, plants and the other sediment known as blue carbon. Blue carbon. So moving to next question, but you have to remember this is Apple company who signed an agreement with the Applied Environmental Research Foundation to protect mangrove ecosystem in the Raigad district of Maharashtra. Moving to next question, Indian Air Force and Indian Navy signed a pact with whom to use chef technology to protect warships and fighter aircrafts. So again, very important question, especially for the banking student. Indian Air Force and the Indian Navy have partnered with the DRD or Defense Research and Development Organization so that they can use the shaft technology in the Indian Air Force aircraft 
and Indian naval ship in order to protect from enemy radar guided missiles during the hostile situation. So Indian Air Force and Navy tie up with the DRDO to acquire the shaft technology. Now the question arises what is this shaft technology? This is again very important because shaft is a passive expendable electronic countermeasure technology used worldwide to protect naval ships, fighter aircrafts from enemy radars and the radio frequency missile. And specially DRDO has also developed advanced shaft cartridges for Indian Air Force with better efficiency against higher frequency radar threats in the modern warfare scenario. So you have to just remember Indian Air Force and Indian Navy signed a pact with the DRDO specially to exchange the shaft technology to protect the warships and the fighter aircrafts. Moving to next question. Which institute signed a memorandum of understanding with PASOKO to conduct research and development on India's power sector? So again this question is important and remember about this company PASOKO. This is Power System Operation Corporation Limited and name of the institution is IIT Delhi. So answer of this question is B. So Power System Operation Corporation Limited and Indian Institute of Delhi signed a memorandum of understanding to encourage research and development on the issues related to India's power sector and also to strengthen interaction between the academia and industry. So you can see here this is IIT Delhi who ties up with the Power System Operation Corporation Limited to conduct research on the India's power sector. So the MOU aimed at strengthening industry academia interaction with the goals of knowledge sharing and the capacity building through collaboration. It also encourages research on the issues related to India's power sector such as grid operations, short term demand and renewable energy forecasting using artificial intelligence and machine learning and other things. And recently this IIT Delhi also has partnered with Delhi Jal Board, Delhi Jal Board to conduct a research and development initiative on the water supply and also water supply distribution. But you can also remember here about PASOKO which is also known as Power System Operation Corporation Limited. It is fully owned government of India subsidy and also comes under the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy responsible to ensure the integrated operation of the national electricity grid in a secured manner. And it comes under the Electricity Act of 2003 and it consists of five regional load dispatch centers and national load dispatch center. And where is the headquarter? Headquarter is in New Delhi and its chairman and managing director. You have to remember chairman and managing director is S.R. Narsima. S.R. Narsima. Moving to next question. RBI has mandated non-individual borrowers with aggregate exposure of dash and above to obtain legal entity identifier code. So the main important thing is this legal identity identifier code. So it is a 20 digit, 20 digit unique code to identify parties to financial transactions worldwide, worldwide. And it improves the quality and accuracy of financial data system for better risk management. And answer of this question is rupees 5 crore and above. So answer of this question is C. So Reserve Bank of India mandated non-individual borrowers with aggregate exposure of 5 crore and above specially from the banks and the financial institution should obtain legal entity identifier codes. And here term exposure is very important because exposure means all fund based and the non-fund based like credit as well as investment worth. So remember what is the meaning of this legal entity identifier. So borrowers who fail to obtain legal entity identifier codes from an authorized local operating unit will not be sanctioned any new exposure and they will also not get a renewal and enhancement of any existing exposure. But there are some exempted entities from this legal identifier like department agencies of the central and the state government. So there are some categories like uh, rupees 5 crore and above up to 10 crore. They have to obtain this LEI till the date of 30th of April 2025 like last. Above 10 crore up to 25 crore 30th of April 2024 and above the 25 crore, first of all, they have to take this LEI codes by the date of 30th of April 2023. So moving to next question. Darlong's community of which state recently included in the list of scheduled tribes? Static question. Just remember Darlong community and it belongs to state of Tripura. So answer of this question is A. So you can see here the President Ramnath Kovin gives assent to the Constitutional Scheduled Tribe Order Amendment Bill of 2022. And the act provides Darlong, a small community around 11,000 people in Tripura to officially get included in the list of scheduled tribes. And the Darlong community is the sub-tribe of the Kuki tribe in the list of scheduled tribe in Tripura. 
and Thanga Darlong and the Darlong community has received the Padam Shri Award in the year of 2019 in the category of Art, Music, Flute by the Government of India. And the community excels in education, public service, music, art and the culture. But remember the state of Tripura. Tripura Chief Minister is Biplap Kumar Dev and Governor is Satyadeo Narayan Arya. Move into next question. Prime Minister laid the foundation stone for the world's first WHO Global Center for the Traditional Medicine at which place? So Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation stone of the World Health Organization Global Center for Traditional Medicine in the Jamnagar. Jamnagar is situated in Gujarat. The examiner can ask the state and it was inaugurated in the presence of World Health Organization Director General Ted Rossi and Prime Minister of Mauritius Pravind Kumar Jagannath. Pravind Kumar Jagannath. You can also see here the picture. This is Ted Ross, this is Pravind Kumar Jagannath and this is our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. So you can see here it will emerge as an international hub of the global wellness and the center recognizes India's contribution and potential in the field of traditional medicine and it is the first and the only global outpost center for the traditional medicine across the world. And it will also focus on the data, innovation and sustainability and also will optimize the use of traditional medicine. So now the question arises why Jamnagar was chosen for the new center because more than 50 years ago the world's first Ayurvedic university was set up in Jamnagar. So that's why Jamnagar was selected for the world's first World Health Organization Global Center for the Traditional Medicine. Move into next question. Next question is in the important question section but first of all you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link so that you can receive the notification on time. Here is the first question, who won 2022 presidential elections of Timor Leste? So you have to remember where is Timor Leste, you can see here the world map, this is Australia, this is India and in between this is Southeast Asia. And in the Southeast Asia, above Australia, you can see this is Timor Leste. And who become the president of Timor Leste or the East Timor? Answer of this question is Jos Ramos Horta. So answer of this question is A. So independence leader and the Nobel Peace Prize laureate Jos Ramos Horta has been declared victory in the 2022 presidential election of East Timor. So you can also see here the picture of Ramos Horta. And he has served as the Prime Minister and the Minister of Defence of the East Timor from the year of 2006 to 2007 and also served as the President of East Timor from 2007 to 2012. He won the Nobel Prize in the year of 1996 for their work toward a just and peace or the peaceful solution to the conflict in the East Timor. And he will sworn into the office on 20th of May 2022 which marks the 20th anniversary of the East Timor independence. And uh, which is the capital of uh, East Timor? Capital is Delhi. Delhi. And currency is United States dollar. Move into next question. Which company and OneWeb inked an agreement to complete OneWeb satellite launch program? Recently, this company signed an agreement with SpaceX, but now they signed an agreement with New Space India Limited. So remember, answer of this question is D. And New Space India Limited, which is a commercial arm of ISRO, and OneWeb inked an agreement to complete OneWeb satellite launch program. So the pact was signed in the mutual interest of New Space India Limited and OneWeb for developing satellite constellation network, delivering industry-grade secure internet connectivity. And the first launch with the New Space India Limited is expected to be launched from the Stish Dhawan Space Center. And the new launches will add OneWeb's low earth orbit communication satellite in orbit constellation network to 428 satellite which is 66% or two third of the planned total fleet to deliver a high speed and low latency connectivity. And the current contract was the follow up of the separate agreement between OneWeb and the SpaceX and American aerospace manufacturer in March 2022 to enable the companies to resume satellite launches. But you can also remember about OneWeb. OneWeb is co-owned by India's Bharti Group, Bharti Group and the United Kingdom government and its headquarters is in London. So just remember the question as same as in slide. Move into next section. It is our one liner important point. Here is the first point. Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi was on a three day visit to Gujarat. We already covered this question. SEBI issued rupees 2.06 crore recovery notice to the former National Stock Exchange Chief Ravi Narayan. 
So Securities and Exchange Board of India issued a fine of 2.06 crore on Ravi Narayan, the former Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the National Stock Exchange in case related to the governance issues over the appointment of the Chief Strategic Officer at the National Stock Exchange in the year of 2013. Just remember the name Ravi Narayan. Next is Navy Chief unveiled joint navigation chart in the Maldives. Not important, just read this line. In the first overseas visit, since assuming the office of the Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral R. Hari Kumar held several high-level bilateral meetings during a three-day visit to the Maldives from 18 to 20th of April 2022. Next, West Bengal has received proposals worth Rs 3.42 lakh crore during the Business Summit of 2022. Remember, this is the 6th Bengal Global Business Summit 2022 and West Bengal received investment proposal of 3.42 lakh crore. And during the second day summit, the state has signed a total of 137 memorandum of understanding and letter of intent. And two day summit was attended by 4300 participants from 42 countries. Next, center appointed C. Mohammed Fezi as the member of Hajj Committee of India. So the government of India has appointed C. Mohammed Fezi as the member of Hajj Committee of India, a statutory body under the Ministry of Minority Affairs. And the Ministry of Minority Affairs is the nodal ministry to conduct the Hajj pilgrimage in India. And Hajj pilgrimage for the Indian pilgrims is conducted either through Hajj Committee of India or the Hajj Group Organizers approved by the ministry. Next, International Mother Earth Day observed on 22nd of April. We already covered this question. Moving to the question of the day, what was the question of 22nd of April 2022? What is the validity of demand draft? Very simple question because as per the guidelines of Reserve Bank of India, demand draft is valid for 3 months or 90 days from the date when the draft was issued by the bank. And after the third month, you can revalidate this demand draft upon written request to the issuing bank. Moving to next question, it is the question of the day. Barometer of the Indian market is. So you have to tell me answer only in the comment box. I am waiting your answer. But please like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join a telegram group and press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time. But it is a fierce cloud. Promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section. Don't take life so much serious. Life is fun. Always be happy like this smiley. Thank you guys. Take care and bye-bye.